Hello everyone, Pepo here. With title update 3 kicking in, new important skills and armor pieces became available. So it is about time to update my last build video for the longsword as many of you already pointed out in the comments of my recent videos. I will show you guys a build that I consider to be the perfect solution for people who want to deal good damage keeping a balance between offensive and comfy skills. My builds, as always, do not include charms or Kuro armors, so everybody can make them. Later in the video I will make some considerations in case you can use a good charm or want to use Kuryo armors. Before discussing the build, if you haven't watched my latest videos where I talk about Powder Mantle and Wind Mantle, respectively from Reason Teostra and Reason Kushala, make sure to check them out to understand better how these new skills work and why I highly recommend them, since today's build video will cover these new skills. The build I prepared for this video makes use of three skills that I consider to play a key role for several reasons. Starting from Wind Mantle, which speeds up the Warby Gauge recovery time. You want to use this skill at least at level 1 in all your longsword builds. Levels 2 and 3 are even better of course, but it is really hard to get them without the use of a good charm and optimal Kuro augments. It's important to consider that the biggest difference comes between levels 0 and 1, so levels 2 and 3 are not essential, but they definitely help. To get this skill we used Reason Kushala Helm, which also comes with Warbug Whisper at level 3 and 3 to 1 slots. The next skill is Powder Mantle, an offensive skill that triggers a pure damage explosion with a motion value of 125, extremely good in any hunting scenario. To get this skill we use the Reason to Ostra Chest, which comes with important additional skills, Critical I3 and Weakness Exploit 1. If you then consider the 220 slots, it's easier to understand why this piece is one if not the best chest currently available in the game. Lastly, we will make use of Intrepid Heart. This skill is literally a lifesaver and will come in handy in many situations. Charging up the blue bar negates any reaction to the damage on the next hit received, with a 50% damage reduction, like a Rocksteady Mantle effect. Either if you play with Sacred Sheath or Special Sheath, you will basically not get penalized in case you miss a counter or you fail to dodge an attack. And the good news is that it only takes 34 hits to land with Longsword to fill up the blue bar. To get this skill we use the Flaming Espinas Arms, which also come with Attack Boost 1, Razor Sharp 2, and 4 2 zero slots. The core of this build is composed of these three armor pieces. While the coil and the legs will change depending on the longsword, the charm you have, and possibly Kuro augments. Some of the best coils are the Anjanat Coil X, Rattalos Coil X, the Scholarly Sash, and the Grand God Spear Belt. While some of the best legs are the Ingot Greaves X, the Outpost HQ Greaves, the Reason Kaiser Quiz, and the Silver Soul Greaves. Let's pick for example the Pure Sword Ichimonji. This is the build that comes out of selecting the armor pieces I mentioned above. The jewels are the following. 2 Attack, 3 Cornerstone, 2 Critical, 2 Expert, 1 Sheath, 1 Sheath Plus, and 2 Tenderizer. The skills are the following. Attack Boost 7, Critical I7, Critical Boost 3, Weakness Exploit 3, Quick Sheath 3, Windproof 3, Warbug Whisperer 3, Defiance 3, Razor Shark 2, Spare Shot 2, Intrepid Heart 1, Wind Mantle 1, and Powder Mantle 1. Let's make some considerations on this build. I decided to use the 3 slot level 1 available to get Defiance at level 3, since at this level this skill nullifies both weak and strong roars and even tremors. Definitely a defensive comfy skill to have. In case you play with other hunters, I always suggest you use one level of flinch free. You can even use Spirit Bird's Call in this level 1 slot, or you can get to Steed Fast at level 3 to prevent stun. With title update 3, Capcom added the Aurora melding with which you can choose which primary skill to have on your charm. This makes the God Charm hunt easier, but even if you don't get a God Charm, the odds of receiving a good charm are extremely high. So if you have a charm with one or more skills you added via decorations in your build, for example a quick sheath or attack boost, you can remove those decorations and equip the charm so you have some free slots to work with. I have a quick sheath level 3 charm. 
Then I can remove my quick shift decoration and use those three slots to add for example another level of razor sharp to reach level 3 and I can add a handicraft plus jewel to have more purple sharpness. Depending on your charms or on your Kuro augments, you can even decide to swap the coil or the legs with another armor to get the skill you want. So if I want Agitator, I can use the Violet Mitsu coil and get to Agitator 5 for example. You can get whatever skill you might find useful depending on your own playstyle. Make sure to check out my latest longsword guide on my channel if you want to improve your gameplay. Remember that the most important thing is your skill with longsword and how you approach the hunt. It's important to have decent skills to face the monsters, and that's why I make this kind of video. But ultimately, the true potential of a hunter comes from the monster and the weapon's knowledge. Never forget that. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!